Hello, everybody. Welcome to Prophetic Lifestyles with Bernard Bolton, where we are making the prophetic practical, bringing the prophetic into everyday life, and creating the future by the choices that we make today. Well, today is a very special day on the Hebrew calendar. It is the 14th day of Nisan, and the 14th day of Nisan is actually the beginning of Passover, but it is also the day that Jesus Christ died on the cross on Calvary, the 14th day of Nisan, uh, and it's late. It's almost, well, it's, it's past 9.30, and so we're actually moving into the 15th day, but um, I wanted to come on and just share with you what does Passover mean to us who are prophetic, because there's different uh, there's different significance according to whatever uh, whatever faith you practice, okay? So for the Christian, the traditional Christian or the denominational Christian, the Protestant, even the Catholic, this is called Holy Week. Starts on Sunday, uh, which is Palm Sunday, and it goes to Friday. Uh, which is called Good Friday, which traditionally was the day Jesus was supposed to die, but he didn't die on Good Friday. He died on the 14th day of Nisan. So today would have been the day on the Hebrew calendar. Today would have been the day that Jesus Christ died. And then on next Sunday, uh, it is celebrated as Easter. And some, some denominations have moved away from the word Easter and they call it Resurrection Sunday. Um, if you are, um, let's see. So if you are Jewish, then this is actually your Passover. And tonight is the beginning of Passover and it will continue for the next eight days. And it will, it will uh, and it commemorates for the Jew, it commemorates their deliverance from Egypt, from slavery under Pharaoh, and how God brought them out by a mighty hand and through many miracle signs and plagues, all right? And even, uh, even for the Muslim, um, this is not the beginning of Ramadan, but it is uh, a part of Ramadan. I actually happened to work with a Muslim a young lady, and she's been observing Ramadan. And so there's a convergence of religions uh, at this time of the year, but I'm not speaking to any of those different religions or different uh, faith observances. I'm speaking tonight to to the prophetic people and how is this? How does this day relate to us? Because many of us who are prophetic, we are Christians, we are traditional Christians, we are members of churches and ministries and. And, and some of us, uh, you know, just go after God in our own non-traditional way. So for prophetic people, this is a very significant time. It's significant because number one, it's the beginning of the year, the spiritual new year. Uh, God gave a new calendar to uh, Israel, and he said that this month, Nisan, would be the beginning of months. So prophetically for us, this month represents a beginning. It represents a beginning. Now, how is that manifesting in your life? I don't know, but, but you should receive this time as a beginning, which means you should be doing new things. You should be starting new things. You should be uh, connecting with God in new ways, experiencing him and his presence, and even doing life in a new way. All right, this is the time for that. All right, and so then also prophetically, we, uh, we do look at Jesus Christ as our Passover. He is the Passover. And matter of fact, the whole uh, significance of the of the feast, the Passover feast, it is a prophetic picture of Jesus Christ. And so, what I want to share with you tonight on this on this video, I want to share with you the prophetic Passover, the prophetic Passover, because for us, for Passover, 
is significant to, to prophetic people because Passover means that we are going over. We are moving from one season to another, from one ram to another, from one spear to another, from one level to another. We are passing over. That is what the prophetic lifestyle is. It is a life of passing over. So that means that we're leaving the old. We're always leaving the old and we're coming into the new. And as a prophetic people, we also have a eye for the new because our vision is always toward the future. Now, we are to live in the present, okay? We are to be fully engaged in the present, but we also have an eye toward tomorrow because that's where prophetic people live. We live in tomorrow. And then when tomorrow manifests, tomorrow becomes now and we experience the now, all right? So Jesus Christ is our Passover, and we are to always experiencing experience Him. But let's take let's take this time in Nisan, and let's take this night, the fifteenth, the fourteenth day of Nisan, to just stimulate the prophetic principles in our life. And what are those prophetic principles in our life? Okay, first of all, we start with. The reason why Jesus is the Passover, okay? And that starts, and that actually uh, starts in Exodus chapter 12, all right? Exodus chapter 12, and beginning at, um, we want to start, yeah, beginning at verse number eight. Then they shall eat the flesh, on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall, you shall let none of it remain until morning and what remains of it until morning, you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it, and thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So shall you eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. It is the Lord's Passover, okay? So they were to roast the lamb. They were, they were first, they first slaughtered the lamb. And then they wiped the blood of the lamb over the doorposts, which became their protection from death. And then they, they cooked the entire lamb and they ate it. And in that instance, prophetically, <clears throat> we eat Jesus Christ for he is our life. He is our sustenance. He is the one who sustains us. And so one of the things that take place, and I wish I, uh, I wasn't really led to do communion tonight, but this is a good season for you to just take communion. And remember when we, when we take the bread, we are eating the body of the Lord. We are prophetically and spiritually eating the body of the Lord. And his body is our life. It's our strength. It's our sustenance. And, the, and they were supposed to eat it ready to go because they were passing over from slavery into freedom. So as we eat Jesus Christ, prophetically, as we eat Jesus Christ, we are always ready to move because he is the Passover who is causing us to move. All right, now, as the Passover sacrifice Jesus Christ died on the cross, taking the penalty of our sin, which is death. He took all of our sins, all of our guilt, all of our misdeeds, our wrongs. Jesus took everything that we did that offended God and separated us from God. And he became 
the penalty. He became sin so that we can be delivered from the penalty of sin, which is death. And so Jesus Christ, as we remember him, as we reflect on him prophetically, he is the sacrifice that was offered on the cross to rescue us from death. And so on the 14th day of Nisan, which is today, the 14th day of Nisan, okay, Jesus, who came as the Lamb, he came as the lamb. Always remember that. Jesus, the Passover, came as the lamb to be sacrificed so that we might have life. So when we eat of him, he becomes our life. All right? So here's the three principles I want to give you. Three prophetic principles. Number, the, the, the word, uh, the, the word, Passover in Hebrew is Pasek, Pasek, and Pay is the first letter, and we're in the Pay decade. Remember that 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 the the twenties is the Pay decade, and so every word that starts with Pay becomes significant in this decade. So this is a Passover decade, but the only way we can pass over is through Jesus. Okay. You, you're not going to be able to pass over on your own. You're not going to be able to pass over through politics, through the world, uh, through your own ingenuity or even your creativity. The only thing that can cause you to pass over in this decade is Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Lamb. The Lamb of God. Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach. And so... The first letter pay represents the mouth. And it is with the mouth that we release Jesus into our life. I want I want to show you this principle. This is this was often used uh, in order to bring people to salvation, but this but this verse in Romans 10 and 9, uh, it can be considered a salvation scripture. But it is also a scripture that denotes the prophetic principle of Passover because it is with our mouth. It is with the pay, Romans 10, 9. For with the, uh, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So as we confess him with our mouth, whatever you confess with your mouth, that that becomes your life. That becomes life to you. Because a confession means to release with your mouth the agreement that you have with the Lord. And so every day we should confess Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my life. Jesus is my Passover. Jesus is my sustainer. We should, we, I mean, you can even confess in tongues. You can confess because what is happening is you are creating life within your, in, within yourself. And as you confess with your mouth, whatever you confess with your mouth, that is what you will experience. All right, let's look at another verse here. Romans 15 and 6. Romans 15 and 6, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ with one mouth, okay? So that means whenever there's a gathering of us, with our one mouth, we should glorify, give honor, esteem, lift up, uh, praise, extol, exalt, with one mouth, we glorify, okay? We glorify our God and, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when we are one mouth, that's why the, that's why the devil keeps, and I, it's not just the devil, that's why people are so intentional to keep us separate. I do want to say the devil, 
but it's not always the devil. There are people who are designed to keep us separate. And when I say us, I mean the, I mean the people of God. And as a prophetic people, we should all be speaking with one mouth, giving glory to God. With one mouth glorifying God our Father, all right? So with the mouth, so then the, the first prophetic principle of Passover is use your mouth. Use your mouth to declare Jesus as your Passover, okay? Now, the second letter in Pasach or Passover is the letter Shamek, which is also the shield, okay? And in Ephesians 6.16, it says, above all, taking the shield of faith, because Passover is also linked to warfare. So we're in a time of warfare. And because Passover is linked to this era or to this decade, we're in a decade of warfare. Not only are we seeing warfare in the spirit, but we're also seeing warfare of the nations. We're almost on the brink of World War III. We should, we should pray that that doesn't happen because, because nuclear a nuclear war is going to destroy most of this planet. But that's where we are because there are persons in the earth that are pushing an agenda for war. All right. And so, and so we're, but but as a prophetic people, and I'm trying, I'm trying to, I want to stay on the prophetic. I don't, because I don't do politics, really, really don't care. Uh I got caught up in what has happened the last few weeks, and but I'm not. I'm, you know, eventually I, I I can pull myself out by the by the grace of God and with my mouth I can pull myself out. But listen, the the shield of faith. Okay, because we're in a time of war, we have a shield of faith. That shield of faith causes us to win every time. No matter how, what what is okay, let, let's let's just go to Ephesians six sixteen. All right, all right. I hope this blesses y'all. Ephesians six sixteen. All right. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which which with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Okay, so he's throwing these fiery darts, but the shield of faith. All right, he can't penetrate with his darts because we have the shield of faith. So we are dressed for war. Whether you're in war or not, you are to daily put on the shield of faith. All right, so that is a prophetic principle of Passover because in Passover, one of the things that happen in Passover is kings go to war. So there is warfare associated. Jesus went to the cross. Uh, I love this verse, Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. See, this is why we don't have to war. We don't have to war like, you know, a lot of religious people war. A lot of religious people, they war because they don't know. They don't know that Jesus already won. Okay, so they just keep fighting the devil and keep fighting demons and seeing demons everywhere and fighting demons and fighting you know, but listen to what Colossians 2.15 says. Having dishonored principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing, tri triumphing over them in it. Jesus won the war. So why are we fighting war? Well, we're, we're fighting war because... The enemy is a stubborn foe who will not give up until he has finally, until he has finally been put out of business. We also have to keep fighting, but we don't fight. We don't fight from a place of defeat. We fight from victory. We fight because Jesus Christ has already disarmed the enemy. So whatever the enemy throws at you has no real power. Most of your most of our warfare is in our mind. 
So if we have the shield of faith, guess what? Faith is a belief. It is a confidence. So faith, really, the shield of faith operates in your mind. So when the enemy comes or when anything comes against you, if you, if you are settled in your mind, if faith is settled in your mind, then you will, you will fight differently. Because the greater fight was at the cross. Jesus won. So we're we're now fighting uh just because you know we're 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 on guard. We are we are fighting not to take ground, we are fighting to keep what has already been assigned to us. All right. And so we have the shield, Shame. Lastly, we have the, the letter Hey, the third letter, the third letter in Pass in Passover Pesach is hey, which is revealed, okay? And so this is also a time where the Lord is revealing, he is revealing things to us. He is revealing things to us. Matthew eleven twenty five. 25, at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. So this is a time of revelation to those who are like babes, to those who are hungry, to those who are, who are in need. Babes have to be taken care of. And the Lord is revealing things. Passover is a time of revelation. And so things are being revealed to us. Our eyes are being opened because our eyes are pure. And with pure eyes, we see God. And so Passover is about the revelation of seeing God, seeing Jesus, seeing the Lamb, seeing the Passover. That's what this season is about. So let's walk in this prophetic season for the rest of Nisan, okay? Let us, let us declare with our mouth the Lord Jesus, for in him we have life. Let us put on our shield of faith, because with our faith, we are disarming principalities and powers. And let us receive the revelation that the Lord is giving to us, opening our eyes to see. Thank you for being a part of our channel. Thank you for liking the video, subscribing to our channel. And, um, and we just bless you in this season and pray that many Passover blessings uh, will come upon you. We'll see you next time. Shalom.